Thank you, church, for that moment. Funny, today we're talking about the interior spaces. And sometimes the Spirit just takes hold of those interior spaces. <clears throat> so, uh, I might go get some water while I'm talking. <clears throat> The title of my message today is Nuts, Bolts, PVC, Jesus, and Me. <laughs> Those interior spaces behind the walls that people don't see regularly. But we're invited to go on a regular basis to spend just a little time with Jesus spend some time with the God of our understanding. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so come with me. Jesus was making his way through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem. The crowds were massive. Apparently there wasn't anyone who has not heard of this unorthodox teacher. Can you turn me down please, Michelle? As a healer and miracle worker, he was going across the country, single-handedly turning family and government health care on its head. As a learned religious scholar, he challenged the accepted understanding of relationship with God and self and others. He challenged the religious authorities and regularly sacrificed task and the law for relationship and the individual, regularly. He let folks know that God is close in and calls us God's very own and beloved and my child and I love you. And as a worker for civil rights, Jesus challenged the power structure and the systems of oppression, be they inside of oneself, one's family, religious institutions, or governments. And as a downright great human being, he wept he ate with his friends, he played with children, he got angry, and from time to time he needed just a moment of quiet time and prayer, which he seldom seemed to get, to attend to his own interior life. These are some of the nuts and bolts of, or fundamentals of the Jesus that we read about in the scriptures. And it's clear from the, this writer of Luke the author of the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Those who have fallen and lost their way, lost their faith, lost their religion, or lost their sense of self. And we see throughout these chapters of Luke, Jesus' intimate and compassionate concern for the lost, the marginalized, and the outcast among them being tax collectors and wealthy pious rulers, lepers and those with no sight and those who couldn't walk, those who had to beg just to live, immigrants and the hungry and the poor. This is the Jesus that we're going to encounter today in today's gospel. And as Zacchaeus enters the story in Luke 19, we learn something about him up front. He is wealthy. Baby, he's got money to burn. He's a chief tax collector. And he's not, he's not just a tax collector. He has people working for him collecting taxes. And as such, he was an outcast and on the margins. And according to the community norms and customs on, of his day, he was considered socially and spiritually unclean. He was considered the worst of the worst of the worst of sinners. He was a collaborator with the oppressive Roman government and considered likely to have corrupt business practices. We learn that he has an inquiring mind because he is seeking Jesus and he wants to see the teacher any way that he can. He climbs a sycamore tree, which in the culture of that time was a symbol of strength 
and protection and eternity. His name Zacchaeus means clean and pure, which is ironic for the story. Interestingly enough, my name also means pure one, which is ironic for the story. Pure Tasmanian devil, yes. And last and not least, he's not very tall. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Just as we've been talking about building our generous spiritual homes and the behind the scenes work that it's going to take, that interior work to construct our homes. It seems as though Zacchaeus has done his own behind the scenes interior work as well. He prepared his heart's home regarding Jesus long before they ever met face to face. He still wanted to see what Jesus was all about, even as an outcast. In Luke, 9, in Luke 18, the scripture verses just before this story, Luke tells us about Jesus' encounter with another wealthy person, a rich young ruler. Zacchaeus might have heard about that rich, rich young ruler that Jesus encountered. He was a righteous, religious, and socially accepted person. And he walked away sad when Jesus told him a path to meaningful life. Jesus invited him to be generous and to give away what he had and to follow Jesus. The rich young ruler couldn't do it, and he walked away. Now, maybe they knew each other, and afterwards, the ruler talked it over with Zacchaeus. It could be that Zacchaeus was already praying about the poor and the disenfranchised and ways to give back to his community while he was thinking about seeing Jesus. Whatever it was that inspired him, Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowd to see Jesus. And for his time, again, understand that this was an undignified act for an adult man to be running through the crowd and climbing a tree. He wanted to see Jesus that bad. And as Jesus is making his way through the city, he stops under Zacchaeus' tree and calls him out. Have you ever been called out like that? Well, maybe not like that, but you've probably been called out. Can you imagine what might have been going through Zacchaeus' head in that moment to be called out by Jesus by name? He knows my name. Nowhere in the story does it says, Jesus' people says, who's that guy? And they say, he's the keys. No, he knows my name. He knows my name. And can you imagine what might have been going through Zacchaeus' mind in that split second? Did I do the dishes? Is my house clean? Did I make my bed? No. <laughs> Maybe he just thought, Jesus knows my name. He didn't seem to hesitate, though, and he hurried down the tree. He came out of this place of covering and protection in that tree, and he came face to face with Jesus, who invited himself to, to Zacchaeus' house. Now, I think about that today. When was the last time you invited yourself to somebody's house that you just met? This is Jesus of this story. <laughs> now, in thinking about it, maybe Zacchaeus would have invited Jesus to hospitality himself if it had not been for the pressure of society and the religious institutions saying he wasn't good enough. He was a collaborator with the oppressor. He was the enemy and he was unworthy. So many times we believe those stories about ourselves, about our worth and our value and what we have to bring to the community. I'm just so reminded of the song Eclectic Praise sang so eloquently last week. They did such a great job. I wanted to invite them back this week, but I didn't think I'd get them together. And I can hear Zacchaeus maybe singing this out. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me 
up inside you thought I was to die for so you sacrifice your life so I could be free so I could be whole so I could tell everyone I know in his head maybe and now here's where the story could have gone off the rails and I believe very often for us in our own journeys and our own path this is where our stories go off the rails the voices of the grousing crowds start up the crowd grouses and complains and judges and condemns and names and shames Many of us believe or believed those voices of condemnation. Voices telling us that God could not possibly love us based on some human standard or some human measure. Voices telling us that God is not pleased with us or that we won't accomplish something in our lives or will never amount to anything. Voices telling us that we're not worthy or that we don't have something to generously contribute to our community. Sometimes those crowd voices are coming from inside of us. I encourage each of us to be like Zacchaeus. Know who you are. A beloved child of God. Created in God's image. Life breathed with God's spirit. And empowered to act and practice generosity in your community. The scripture says Zacchaeus stood his ground against condemnation and judgment from the crowd. This is a place to stand your ground. This time he chose to say, I know who I am. I am a child of God. I'm a descendant of Sarah and Abraham. I'm a valuable resource for God in God's people in this community. And he didn't answer directly to the crowd. He answered to Jesus. Z Jesus affirms Zacchaeus. Yes, you are a child of God. Yes, you are God's beloved. Yes, you are a descendant of Sarah and Abraham. Yes, you may have lost your way, yet you're back on track. You may have fallen down, but you got back up. Amen. The inside work that Zacchaeus did put him in contact with Jesus long before they met face to face. When I was in seminary, I learned about a theologian and a mystic, St. Teresa of Avila. I was so amazed with her writings about our inward prayer and meditation life. She called this the interior castle. That connection led to a pilgrimage to Avila, Spain for me to see her writings and her environment and to feel her mystical spirit for myself. I saw the caves that she and the Carmelite nuns prayed in. She was alive during the Spanish Inquisition, and I'm convinced that she was a feminist and that her writings were subversive, a subversive way to talk about women's power and feminism without being um, burned at the stake. And she wrote exclusively about the prayer life, she and her buddy, St. John of the Cross who also joined forces with her. In her book, The Interior Castle, she writes about the interior life. Mental prayer, in my opinion, is nothing else than an intimate sharing between friends. It means taking time frequently to be alone with God, who we know loves us. The important thing is not to think much, but to love much, and so do that which is which best stirs you to love. 
Love is not great delight, but great desire to please God in everything. Jesus helps each of us to do work in our own interior spaces, those spaces that have pipes and insulation and HVAC units and PVC and nuts and bolts. These are the foundations of our spiritual lives. These spaces serve to hold up our spiritual house and require regular maintenance and upkeep. Jesus desires to come in to our spiritual homes. And when he does, he takes a look around and he makes himself at home. He looks behind the walls and checks into our spiritual pipes to see if they are clear or if they're clogged with the mess of unforgiveness or spitefulness or isms. He sits down and watches our DVDs with us. He looks into the windows of our eyes and ears and mouths to see what we're taking in on a regular basis and what we're putting out. He goes over to the heating and air conditioning room to test the hotness and the coolness of our anger and our emotions. And I believe Jesus does all this not in an effort to be one of the crowd voices of shame or condemnation, yet to invite us to see if these things are serving us and serving God. If the elements of your interior life are serving you, pray and continue. If the elements of your interior life are not serving you to be generous, kind, and compassionate, change. Asking for help. You and God of your understanding know the answer to that question. And this is important enough, I will say this again. Do hear me, MCCDC. I believe Jesus comes into our interior spaces not in an effort to be one of the crowd voices of shame or condemnation, yet to invite us to see if these things are best serving us in God. If the elements of your interior space are serving you, pray and continue them. And if the elements of your interior space are not serving you to be generous and kind and compassionate, then ask for help to make a change. You and the God of your understanding know what the answer is. This week, look inside those spaces in your heart and spirit. And I invite you to that intimate space of sharing between friends that St. Saint, Saint Teresa talked about. And then do that which best stirs you to love and generosity. Also know that if you fall and lose your way, you can get back up. And as the song says, we fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down. But they didn't stay there and got up. Help me sing that song. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. Oh Lord, for a saint is just a sin. inside of us. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. Rise back up again, for a saint is just a sinner who fell down. But they didn't stay there. Back up again. Can you get back up again? Get back up again. You can get back up again. Get back up again. 
you can get back up again. No matter how far you've fallen, no matter where you've been, for a saint is just a sinner who fell down and didn't stay there and got up. As we enter our time of our appointment with God, I invite you to those interior spaces. You can come and kneel. You can light a candle in the back. You can take a pilgrim journey around our sanctuary. You can come and touch, touch these cool waters of baptism. Be reminded of who you are. You are a beloved child of God. God knows your name. Let's continue our time of worship in our appointment with God.